We're back with another episode. We're back with another episode of Boric Says. And how are you guys doing? I hope you guys had an amazing week and you're definitely going to have an amazing this week. And yeah. So, what did I do this week? Did I do anything this week? Um, I don't think so. I kept it cute and collective. You know, last week I had went to a wedding. This week, so I'm trying to be progressive. I'm trying to leave the house every day or at least two days a week because my therapist told me I need to leave the house. So my thing was I wanted to start walking. So they have this park. Is that Williamsburg? It's in Williamsburg called McCarran Park. And it's like a, a track field. And it's a soccer field there too. So I was like, I started work, walking the track field and jumping rope. So that's like my new thing. So the week I'm trying to be progressive and leave the goddamn house every day and, and be fucking healthy and shit. It want to rain every day in New York City. And I was thinking about going and walking, but I'm not about to get sick, you know, over trying to be progressive and leave the house every day because I, I just don't want to get sick. I don't I don't like feeling wet, you know. So, if I don't have to go outside necessarily, you know, then I just, I just won't. It's, it's going to stop raining on Monday. So, well, starting Monday, they said the little rain shower thing that we got going on is going to end. But I think it might pick back up Thursday. Hopefully, it doesn't. So, whatever. So, yeah, I've been trying to be active, be outside or whatnot. And it's fun, you know. I enjoyed walking. But a lot of people, you know, let me tell y'all. Y'all want to go on Instagram and be doing these 30-day challenges and shit. Like, I was trying to do the 30-day jump rope challenge or whatever. But y'all got to understand, there's a thing called jumper's knees. And if you jump rope, your knees will feel fucked up. And there's a thing called runner's knees. And I feel like they be telling people to do these 30-day challenges and don't really bring up the things that could happen, you know, how you should train for these things, you know, because my knees was fucked up after I did my little walk and my jump rope. My knees was bad, bitch, and this is common, but nobody talks about that. They just telling y'all go do a 30-day challenge, but they're not telling y'all the, the repercussions and ramifications of doing that type of shit and that you need to take a rest day and you need to put some ice on your motherfucking knees. So, yeah, if you want to do jump rope challenges, just make sure, you know, you're doing the proper training and stuff like that and you put in ice packs on your knees. My knees still fucked up because I didn't even really put ice pack on it. Maybe after I film I'll do it. Mind you, I did this walk on Monday and it's Sunday because I'm a procrastinator and I'm just now filming. Princess. <laughs> but um, yeah, that was all I did. My mom came over. We just went to the supermarket. Nothing special happened this week and I'm open to that. I mean, I've been having a weird week. I just feel like unbusy. I guess I've been busy for so long and now I'm at like a a calm a standstill and it's just like it's a lot for me so yeah that's that I ain't do nothing special nothing unique this week let's see what 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 has been the tea this week these celebrities be, be behaving low key these celebrities be behaving. The only funny, one of the funny things I've seen. Now, I'm not going to say the only thing. I thought it was just so funny how um, P. Diddy going to post up a picture of him and J-Lo. Because, you know, J-Lo broke up with A-Rod. And he's just toxic. I don't like that shit. He's toxic as fuck. Why would he put that picture up on his Instagram like that? And then she was with Ben Affleck the other day. I don't know. Jennifer Lopez shady as fuck. Like, she weird. She give me widow vibes. Like, she give me big widow vibes. Her and somebody else give me big widow vibes. It was somebody. I was like, something about her just don't sit with my spirit. I forgot who it was. Fuck. It's another celebrity that just, like, something about them just, like, they just make me feel a little weird. <laughs> Random as fuck, Demi Lovato. Something about that bitch don't sue my spirit. <laughs> I don't know why. Like, she just give me Dianifa attention, you know. I know that she's dealt with um drug addiction and stuff, but I just, I don't know. Something about her. She just, I feel like something ain't clicking up there. Like, I feel like if I was to meet her in person, she would be a freaking headache. Um... Yeah, a lot of the stuff that was going on was, like, people I really don't care about. Like, you know, these little other female rappers, you know, if it ain't Nicki, it ain't nothing. Just kidding. 
I mean, I just don't, like, I just really feel like a lot of them, like I said, you know, my past couple of videos, they're not really giving bars. You know who's very slept on? And it's funny that she said that shit. She said, y'all gonna respect her pen game. Doja Cat. I really like Doja Cat. Like, I like her flow. I like the way she talk when she rap. Like, I like her voice. And I like her rap. Like, I really be listening to the stuff she be saying. And I just like the way she le she flows. She's very... I don't know what she slept on because Doja Cat is, like, big as ever. But I think in terms of rap, she is slept on. Like, people, like, know Doja Cat for her fashion, her style, her performance. She is a great performer, too. Um... Her pop music, like, cause she, you never heard her rap on a, a, a hip hop beat per se. She's more so pop. So I don't feel like people look at her like, oh, she's a rapper. I feel like people look at her like, oh, she's an entertainer or whatever the case may be. But I be paying attention to when she would be rapping. Like, I would dead ass be listening. Especially when she go on other people's tracks. I listen. I be like, yo, her flow kind of sick. Like, dead ass. So I think she's like one of the rappers that's like very 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 um slept on big time like i think she's big heavily um slept on um another person too who hasn't been sitting with my spirit is milano meek mills meek mill don't sit with my spirit either milano's uh meek mills baby mother because i don't know like her buying him a car just was like what the fuck is that like i'm 100 percent here for her and it just bothers me that Meek Mills doesn't really like I mean he problematic so it's like maybe she's dodging a bullet by not being with him but it's just like like I even noticed like on her page she played his songs and her videos and stuff like and I'm just like Meek Mill not showing you that that love and the fact that she bought like she can be one of those girls that's like i want to show everybody i have money and that i'm big and that i'm businessy like when she bought her son the 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 property i thought it was cute but it was given very much that with the her buying meek mills the car was given very much like i'm gonna let you bitches know i got my own money and there's nothing wrong with that but it was just it was just giving attention. Like, I'm going to just say what it is. Like, bitch. Like, what the fuck you want to hear? Like, it's just giving very much. And it's not hating because I know some people are like, y'all are just hating. It's not hating. It's just you could tell when people are just doing stuff to do stuff. Like, it's a, def it's a definitely, it's definitely an aesthetic. Like, and when she put me in the car, I just, I don't know. Just because, just, just because of how I've seen him kind of treat her online for me i wouldn't put that nigga no fucking car the fuck i'm gonna fucking my baby father like get the fuck out of here then he said my baby mom's like bitch like stop for real like for real like if, if i felt like okay let me buy him a gift i'm not buying him a car i would have bought him a fucking since she got money i would have i should i would have gave him a milano shirt bitch you can get something from my line <laughs> you get something from my label <laughs> give you a Milano gift package bitch happy motherfucking birthday let's be honest let's be honest okay cuz girl the fuck you buying him a car for I remember that nigga said oh yeah I dumped in that he said I wasn't talking about her yeah okay the fuck and then when he publicly told social media that they wasn't dating and oh I I mean, look, this is one thing about me. Uh, speaking of today's topic, you know, I understand 100%, you know, that we all, uh, yeah, I'm going to say we all, like, some of us all suck when it comes to dating. We've done some dumb shit for men. Um, I'm sure there's men who've done some dumb stuff for women. Um, it's not easy dating. So I do try to be cognizant that, you know, I'm not perfect when, it, when when I was dating. I was never perfect. And I've done some dumb shit. Never bought a nigga a car. Because I never had that type of bitch. And I, I just don't think... I, don't, I just don't think I would do something like that. Either way. But, um... You know, I understand that we all do dumb shit. Because I do be seeing people, like, always... Like, for instance, coming for Khloe Kardashian. Because she keep going back to Tristan. And Tristan keep cheating on her or whatever. I'm just be thinking, like, y'all bitch be going back to these niggas that be cheating on y'all every fucking day, bitch. That be broke. That be bummy. Y'all be letting these niggas in y'all crib. These niggas don't got their own home. Like, y'all be just... Y'all be fucking any old body sometimes. 
You know what I'm saying? But y'all would have judged fucking Chloe Kardashian. So, that's my thing too. Like, when it comes to, like, dating, per se, is like, I try to be, like, very non-judgmental and i'm only putting quotation marks because today, that's today's topic about just judge, being judgmental so it's just it's just the perfect segue um so i try to be like not judgmental of how people date and their relationships even though it's so fucking hard sometimes because it'd be like you look crazy i actually too and i've done this in the past like i'll see like maybe a friend or family member the situation and it might be similar to mine and that type of shit would make me want to get out of my situation so you know what i'm saying so those things happen too so you could also look before you start judging look at these people's relationships look at their situation and see if you can relate it to yours and if you can relate it to yours and you judging that motherfucker try to change your situation i try to do that too you know what i'm saying even if you can't relate it to us relate it to yours per se if you know your shit fucked up too maybe you should say well bitch if i look at her and i think she fucking looks stupid how the fuck do i look you know what i'm saying so it is what it is but um just it's just that but i don't know maybe it bothers me what i think maybe what bothers us with celebrities is that they got so much money, so much affluence, so much everything. And it's just like, damn, bitch, you dumb. Like, I be feeling like I be doing dumb shit because I don't got everything, you know. We don't have all the money and the riches and the, 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 the cars and the clothes and businesses and stuff like that. So we just feel like, okay, we're inevitably able to fuck up or we're, we're going to fuck up because we're searching for something that we desire and we're, we're trying to get it but we look at celebrities like they have everything that people desire and they're still doing dumb shit so you know i think that's the main main reason why we're so you know just judgmental of celebrities and their choices and decisions or whatever the case may be that's what i think i'm not 100 percent sure but I mean, hey, you know, Milano do your thing. She's very pretty. Um, the clothes are, they're cute. And I think she could find her another man. You feel me? So, don't don't be chasing me, honey. Don't be chasing me. But, yeah. <laughs> that, that was just it. So, yes. Yeah. So, today's topic is about being judgmental. And, yeah. So, what made me want to talk about this topic? I don't know. I saw it in my list of topics to talk about. I'm like, why haven't I spoken about this? I think I haven't spoken about it yet because other things had came up that I felt were more, more important to talk about at the time. And I was just like, I think I was... I forgot. I think I was thinking about something and it was like about being judgmental. And I was like, why not talk about it? Because I feel like we all have a tendency to be judgmental even when we're not judgmental. I feel like I'm, I used to be judgmental, but I'm not judgmental anymore. <laughs> like when I was probably like 18, 17, 16. But, um, you know, I think being judgmental is also a flaw, a very flawed personality trait. And I think that sometimes people think that being judgmental is not something that's a flawed personality trait. Um, they think that people often get the confusion of being judgmental and being real confused. Like, I feel like a lot of times people who are very judgmental think they're being real, but you're not being real. You're just being mad judgy right now. Like, you're just, you're not telling me anything you're just being judgmental you're not giving me advice you're not saying anything unique you're not saying anything special you're just being mad judgmental right now like let's be honest like i and i think that's why and the reason why i'm going to talk about it because i feel like there needs to be a line drawn um and i just feel like people who judgmental just think that shit is normal like they're not realizing that it is a bad characteristic to have. Like, that shit is a really bad trait to have to be fucking judgmental. It's not cool. You know what I'm saying? And it sh I feel like it shows you a lack of, in some ways, intelligence. Like, I'm dead ass. Um, it shows you a lack of just life. Which is, you know, which is fair. Because you can't control nobody's life at the end of the motherfucking day. And it just shows you a lack of sympathy and empathy. You know what I'm saying? So... Let's jump into the topic today. Okay, so we're about to jump into the topic, but you know before most topics, what do we like to do? We like to expand our 
mine. Expand your mind, expand your mind, expand your mind. So, in an article on lonerwolf.com titled 13 Signs You're, You Are a Judgmental Person and How to End the Habit, written by Mateo Soul. So, what I'm going to do is just tell you guys the 13 signs that he wrote because they were very, very interesting. Um. So, listen to this. So, this is 13 signs you're a judgmental person. So, one, you believe that everyone is out to get you. That's interesting. You expect other people to be consistent all the time. Okay. You struggle to see beyond a person's flaws. Definitely. You easily skip to conclusions. You struggle to tolerate ambiguity and uncertainty okay you're you are tolerant of people oh you are intolerant of people unlike you you are generally pessimistic about life hmm. um you tend to believe people are either good or bad you struggle to truly appreciate or see the beauty in others right you have low self-worth. Ooh, okay. You feel anxious around other people. You are suspicious and untrusting. You have a strong inner critic who judges you. Okay, so that's that's a very big idea, right? Okay, so. <laughs> ah, sorry, guys. All right, so let's, let's jump, 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 jump into it. I just don't like the light in. It's too bright. Okay, so. Girl, 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 girl. The first, okay, so these 13, and let me tell you the ones that's a little shaky, but we, we will probably discuss, is you believe that everyone is out to get you. That's interesting. Um, you tend to believe people are either good or bad. That scares me. Um, uh, you have a strong inner critic who judges you. Um, and you're generally pessimistic about life. Um, so let's talk about being judgmental. Okay. First and foremost, um, what is a judgmental person? A judgmental person is basically, you know, someone who, when you tell them something, they're just like very, but why would you do that? Why would you say that? Oh my gosh, I could never. <laughs> like, that type of person. Um, vice versa, when you tell somebody something's going on in your life, they're like, okay, so let's step back. Let's try to figure out how we could fix this. They're more of a, but why would you do that? You, you, you Do y'all get the two different responses? You feel me? So, let's just jump into it. So, for me... Am my judgment too? No. You could tell me anything and I'll probably just ride with you, ride with you, and we will figure it out. Do we, are we all a little bit judgmental? Yeah, I think so, maybe. Because sometimes, you know, people might tell me something. I'm just like, bitch, but why? In my head, I'm thinking it. I might be thinking it like, really? That's what we doing? That's what we going? That's how we flowing? But at the end of the day, I'm going to just be like, look, I don't fucking know. <laughs> like, at the same token, because... I don't know. And neither do you. We don't know. We don't know why this person is making these choices and decisions. We don't know what they went through in their childhood, even though people don't want to hear that. Everybody gets tired of hearing that saying, but it's the motherfucking truth. Um, we just don't know. We don't know why. And I had to learn that too. Another thing is because, um, I think this is another reason why I wanted to talk about this topic. So, y'all know I kind of like fuck with TikTok, big heavy. You already know. I'm on TikTok. Y'all can follow me. I don't put up videos, but it's Brit Says One on TikTok. But I watch TikTok videos a lot. And one of the things that's been popping up on TikTok, trends that's been popping up on TikTok, is like people whose house is really, really dirty. Not like just hoarding, but just like people who dead ass don't fucking clean their house type shit. And it won't be, like, really dirty when you see roaches and rats and shit. It's just, like, you could tell they're a messy person. Or it'll be, like, people who clean houses and shit like that. 
And what they talk about is really that they just been depressed. They just been feeling low. They just don't have the energy to get up. And they're just going through something mentally. And this refers back to me because when I was younger, uh, when I was about like, I'm trying to think what number. Well, for a very fucking long time, bitch. If you know me, if you're a family, friend, maybe a friend. Because when my friends used to come over, I used to clean up. I used to try to clean up or whatever, bitch. But I was very messy. Like, very, 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 very messy. Like, I hadn't stopped being messy until I was, like, dead ass, like, 24. And we gonna jump into that, too. So, this was my thing, though. Fuck me being 24. Like, from when I was, like young like when i first got my first room i think i was like 13 when i got my own bedroom dead ass that's a whole nother story child we'll get into all that one day i don't know maybe today i don't fucking know but i didn't get my own bedroom until i was 13 so when i was like 13 13 up until i was like 20 something i could not keep my room clean or whatever and this is prior to mental health so i'm 29 so i was 13 about what how many years ago mad long ago <laughs> okay I'm, I'm i don't feel like doing the math but just know over a decade ago right so at the time mental health wasn't really like this thing that was talked about it wasn't so big and i barely understood it so when i didn't have the urge to really like clean my room like i would take off my clothes and just throw the clothes on the floor like i had a hamper like we tried so many things just to get me to put the clothes in a hamper just to get me to like really like clean up and i just couldn't push myself to do it so looking now today where people just talk about like Yo, it's like people who be on TikTok like, yo, I just couldn't clean my room. I just couldn't do this. And this all stems back to mental health and just like depression and anxiety. And it's just like, at the time, you know, my mother, she's West Indian. My family, they, they West Indian. They got West Indian parents because I wasn't really around my father's family like that at the time. Um, Everybody used to just call me dirty. And it's just like, it's really, if, and now that I look at it and I see how, people uh you know kind of treated me because i couldn't clean my room which i understand and, and and you know like it's not cool to have a messy room at the end of the day i'm not like that anymore by the way guys shockingly <laughs> let's be honest but um it's just kind of hurt looking now like damn niggas ain't even asked me if i was okay why do why am i behaving like this nobody offered to get me therapy get me help like some people did offer to help me clean my room I'll, I'll say that much but like i never even looked at it at that age like damn maybe i need help maybe i'm going through something maybe i'm dealing with something psychologically that i'm not privy to what people did was automatically judge me or whatever the case would be like why does bitch not clean her home why does bitch so fucking dirty like she's fucking dirty like you're dirty and even though though i as i got older i was like yeah at the time i was just going through a lot i was just i, I don't know what specifically at the age of 13 you know a lot of people call it said a lot of people say that when teenagers do that, it's a trauma response. You know, I don't know. You know, I might have some repressed memories, bitch. You know, I, you know, look, there's a lot of shit we can talk about. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so that was one of the other things, too, is, like, people just be mad motherfucking judgmental. And I be thinking about mad stuff that we kind of judge people on and, like, just their decisions and their choices. And we don't even really be, like, being kind of, like, just sympathetic like a motherfucker. Because even me at that age, I didn't really know why I could it, clean my room. Like, it seemed so easy. Like, you would just look at everything on the floor and it's just be like, I could just put this shit away. Like, that's, that's what it was, like, in my head. But I just couldn't put myself to do it. But even me, I didn't know that I was um, maybe it was some mental health issues. I didn't know that was a mental health thing. And it's just beautiful to see now, like, on social media that these are things that get talked about. These are things that get discussed. Even today, I was listening to The Read. Just so happens, uh, somebody uh, wrote in and she was basically saying, like, her stepdaughter is messy or whatever like she don't want to clean her room and then she was bringing up like how that could be a trauma response blah 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 the girl's a teenager and i'm just thinking like how beautiful is that and oh and then the stepmother said she wanted to get her therapy and i'm just thinking like damn how beautiful is that motherfuckers see you mad dirty don't want to fucking clean your room they mad you dirty don't want to clean your room but the, the stepmother said what i will do for you is put your ass in therapy so you can figure out why you so fucking messy nobody gave me that honor <laughs> 
You know what I'm saying? Nobody gave me that love. Motherfuckers just said you a dirty ass bitch and you didn't clean your motherfucker room. And if I don't clean my room and get my ass beat, my aunt used to tell my mother to beat my ass and shit and beat me up and shit like that. Like, like they was doing that type of time, motherfuckers. Like, motherfuckers was telling my mother to beat me up. Like, dead ass. Cause I was fucking dirty. Like, bitch, did you ever fucking come think like something like, might have happened to me, bitch? The fuck? Like, that's why I'm so happy that mental health is such a thing that's so discussed and so talked about. And, um, I say that story just to say, like, we need to really be mindful of how we respond to things and just try, try, at minimum, try not to be judgmental. Especially with everything going on in mental health. Like, I was just thinking, that also brings me to the fact, too, is that a lot of shit now, today, a lot of shit y'all used to do back in the day, that shit not gonna fly no more. Because let's be fucking honest. Because now, like, for for that stepmother to, to automatically her response be, I'll put her in therapy, vice versa, me, over a decade ago, everybody was telling my mother to beat my ass. That's a big transition. You get what I'm saying? Like, it's like, it's just... I don't even feel like there's room for judgmental motherfuckers. Like, it's not even room for y'all motherfuckers. If you want to be judgmental, it's not really even really a space for you. There's no space for you. We don't have a room for you. It's, it's, it's a virtually impossible, I feel like, in 2021 and beyond to be judgmental. That's just my opinion. Like, how? How can you be judgmental? But, you know, people do it. And I say, you know, for people who are really, really judgmental, one of the first things that it teaches me is that you have lack of life. Right? So, before I was dating and doing the whole heap of bullshit and just being ratchet and just going to work and just living a life and just being a motherfucking adult, I was judgmental because I ain't never been through shit. And it just shows me... People who are judgmental, you can show that they have a lack of life. And I had a, a really crazy ideology last night. That's why I couldn't wait to do this episode. This is the craziest fucking ideology I ever came up with. But anyway. So I notice people who lack life. I don't, that's not nice to say somebody lacks life. Who hasn't really experienced much. They have a tendency to be very judgmental. But. Listen to this shit. So I'm thinking in my head like, all right, so let's think about motherfuckers who just dated the same guy since they was like, you know, mad young. Or like, I notice a lot of people who are really judgmental, they do a lot of things early. So they'll be like motherfucking in a relationship mad early in a young age. They'll get married mad young, have kids mad young. And they just be mad motherfucking judgmental. Or they motherfucking friends that be fucking mad niggas, sucking mad dick, getting mad abortions, taking play bees, just being a wild ass motherfucking bitch. Um, dating married men. What else? What else people be judging you about? You don't got your shit together. You still live in your parents' house, bitch. You know, because you on one income. Just the things that we judge people about. Right? So I notice people who kind of grow, like, who kind of do the American dream thing very early. Like, let's say you found your boo in high school at 13. Then y'all decide to get married at 21. And then y'all have kids at 25, uh, I say 25. You know, these people t have a tendency to be really judgmental, right? Um, but I'm thinking, I was thinking last night, like, are they smarter than we are? Are these people, like, if you decide to do life early, do you protect yourself from trauma? Bitch, I was dead thinking about this shit. Because often too, I do feel like a lot of times these like people who really just date young, get married young, have a house young, do this young, young, young. I don't know everything about them personally, right? I don't know what they've been through at a young age. But I do feel like they skip a lot of unnecessary trauma, right? Because let's say for instance, you don't get married at 21, right? You're still dating from 18 to maybe shit 30 35 we don't fucking know how long you know when you still single and dating a bunch of niggas is a lot of trauma it's a lot of trauma on your spirits a lot of trauma on your souls a lot of trauma on your pussy you feel me and you kind of just exchanging spirits and souls with all these motherfucking people and you just dealing with a lot of personalities male personalities at that and women personalities you know if you're a man and you watch 
And it, it does require a lot of trauma, even going clubbing, right? I've seen some traumatic shit in the clubs. I've seen niggas throw drinks on bitches, niggas calling girls out their names, just fights. You, you, you just experience a lot of unnecessary traumatic shit, you know, when you're dating. You know, with Tinder, going on these apps, you don't know what the fuck you're going to get into, right? You swipe right, you just go on a date, and you just pray to God you don't get fucking killed. Like, or some G shit. Like, or some real life G shit. Also, too, you kind of, you're naturally on double income by, like, what? Let's say you dating this boy. Like, by 18, y'all already buying each other shit, doing shit for each other, right? Now, me or you that's not dating somebody and you're single, you're only on a single income. You're still trying to thrive into your career. So, it's going to be way harder for you to move out your parents' house. It's going to be way harder for you to get your first house. Maybe even get your first car, bitch. You're probably going to fuck up your credit way, way more. And the, well, the, the, fucking up your credit is depending on lifestyle because it doesn't really matter. But a person who decides to really get married and start a family at a younger age, vice versa, somebody who doesn't, I, I'm going to I'm gonna jump and make this leap. It's not statistically proven. I'm going to think a motherfucker who decides to get married early and start a family early, vice versa, a person who doesn't, this person going to have a lot more trauma than this motherfucker over here. Because you, you, all you focus on is your family and your life and getting a house and get a car and make sure your kids is motherfucking good. When you fucking single up until you 18 and 30 or 35, 40, bitch, because the, the pool is shallow. That's what the streets are saying. The shit got more shallower. Even after I left the streets. Okay. <laughs> but you're you're putting yourself in way more traumatic experiences. You get what I'm saying? Like, you're, you're naturally going to experience way more trauma. I would think even too, like, even getting abortion. I'm pretty sure, like, a girl who's single has way more abortion than somebody who's fucking married. Let's be honest, right? I'm not saying that there's proof of that because I know that it'd be some grown-ass people that be getting abortions and shit like that and... Taking plan B's and shit. It happens. Because sometimes they got three kids. They don't want four. They don't want five. They don't want six. They don't want seven. But I'm pretty sure they experience... I mean, being single, you experience a lot of it. I'm sure you do in marriage too. Because your man might be cheating. Now you got to go to the clinic. You got to make sure you don't got no SCDs and all this other bullshit. Because niggas be wanting to step out on their marriage. But I'm just saying... Is that like a fight or flight mechanism is like let me just get married get my shit together finish school start a family at 21 because you could skip a lot of fucking trauma and unnecessary trauma because you could you, you could go through bullshit regardless if you married or not i'm not saying that but you could miss a lot of uh, you you could kind of avoid some unnecessary ones if you just in a consistent ass relationship. Let's be fucking honest. You could kind of avoid it. Kind of. You can. It's certain shit people who marry and in relationships don't have to deal with if they don't allow themselves to deal with it. Let's be honest. Like, let's be fucking honest. So, I was thinking that too. I feel like they don't, like people who lack life, they don't have to deal with certain life aspects. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, are they playing their cards smarter than us? The fuck? But, um, yeah, I just feel like it's for people who just kind of lack life, who are really, really judgmental, who have a tendency to be judgmental. Um, and they're scared. I feel like a lot of people, too, who are really very judgmental are scared. They're, they're afraid. And they, they should. They might be a little bit jealous that you just just don't give a fuck. Like, if you give a fuck, we all give a fuck. But that you really just be out here just like, well, oh, bitch. Like, they might really be jealous of that that aspect of your life. It's like, you really just gonna call us out and fuck that man the first day you met him? <laughs> like, girl. Yeah, I am. Like, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot on a judgmental person. Because they kind of wish they could be like you in some ways. You know what I'm saying? Um, I think another thing too. So let's say let's say you're not the type of person who got married young. There's another aspect too of people who experience trauma so early in their life. That they kind of want to deal with no more bullshit. They like, bitch, I done seen enough at six. So now, for the rest of my life, I'm going to just be boring as fuck. <laughs> like. 
and, and you gotta respect it. Not boring. Let me stop saying. Because being risky, I'm making it seem like being risky is fun. And and taking risks are fun. They can be fun. I don't want to call people who don't take risks boring, even though, you know, it is debatable. Because, you know, sometimes you don't got to be risky as fuck. Like, chill the fuck out, bitch. Like, stop. Like, chill the fuck out. And sometimes you don't got to be boring as fuck either. But, um... I do know some people too who just been through so much. They done lived in certain situations that's just been so crazy that by the time they get the fuck out of their parents' house, they don't want to deal with no more bullshit. They be looking at motherfuckers like, bitch, I done been homeless. Um, I done been sexually assaulted. I done been motherfucking disrespected. Y'all bitches still sitting out here. Y'all, y'all going to play around still. Like a lot of people was on that type of time too. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like, I don't know but I just feel like also too most people who experience a lot and just been through a lot and just seen a lot and just did a lot they're the least judgmental because they just like I get it this life shit is not fucking easy it's not um it's not easy to navigate um and you don't know what the fuck you gonna get into and that's just the beauty of it and it's also the fucked up part of it. It's like, you don't know. And that's what where anxiety comes into play. But, um, for those of y'all that are judgmental, you gotta cut that shit out. And the way to be knowledgeable of it is like what I first said. When somebody presents something to you or says something to you, pay attention to how you respond to it, right? So, even if somebody says, I'm so, we was just talking about fucking, um, superstitions last week. I be so, like, oddly superstitious. But, um, you know, like, let's say somebody even comes to you and they did some dumb shit. Don't say, why would you do that? Like, don't say that. Say, first ask, are you okay? How about that? Like, depending on what the, the, the judgmental part about this is, right? Um, say, are you okay? Everything good? Let them tell a story. Maybe ask, what would you have done differently? If, if you judgmental, that's a good question to ask if you're a judgmental ass motherfucker. Because it's not really offensive. It's giving them um, room for thought, right? So ask them, are they okay? Then follow up with the question like, what do you think? <laughs> Actually, I think it's, that, that shouldn't be the second question. That should be the last question. What would you have done differently in this situation? Because, bitch, if that's your second question, that's really judgy as fuck. I would just say, damn. So, like, even, you know what? You know what might even be... This might even be considered a very judgmental question is how did that happen? That could be very judgmental. Like what happened? Like what took place? Could be judgmental too. And people not even cognizant of that. Um that, that type that question is is in some ways very judgmental. Um because what a lot of people don't understand is that a lot of things don't be people fault and sometimes motherfuckers don't know what the fuck happened and why things took place and how they took place so at, sometimes asking like what happened depending on like if they already told you what happened like i like let's say i told you what happened and now you're asking me like but what happened like they want to know step for step word for word like bitch i don't know i just told you what the fuck they told me like i fucking know so that could be judgmental it's just about what you say so if you judgmental one of the first questions is like, but well, why would you do that? How did that happen? Don't say that. Say, how are you feeling now that this took place? You know. Um, it's hard. You know, I feel like it's really hard to, like, when I say it aloud, it's really hard. And I know this might be um, problematic. I do think it's hard to, you know, not for me. I can't relate, but... <laughs> I do think it is kind of hard to like really just be sympathetic and empathetic sometimes. I, I do. I can see. I can see how it's hard because it's 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 like when I'm trying to tell y'all like things I would say to somebody that's doing something that I may not, may or may not like. I can see how it might be hard for somebody to think of those things off the top of their head. Or sometimes, bitch, if you judgmental, shut the fuck up. How I don't say nothing. Just listen and be like. That's really crazy. You know, oh, but see, y'all just most motherfuckers be like, that's crazy. And y'all be saying it mad judge. You just be like, oh my gosh. So, like, what's next? Say something like that. Just say what's next. Don't say, but why would you do that? Don't say why or how. Just say, 
what's next for you how are you feeling and if it's really detrimental you can give advice because sometimes there's a there's a really thin line a very very thin line between being judgmental and being motherfucking real there's a this it's a very thin line because sometimes judgmental people be right as fuck but it's just like bitch you're not even understanding where i'm coming from but you know like sometimes they be right so you know before you let them vent ask them are they okay then ask them what they could have did differently and inspire people some people ain't shit though because i remember one when, when <laughs> one time i just was like tell us why you like you know you deserve so much better like you're an amazing person and she just seemed like so over it like fuck you like I feel like that's mad nice to tell somebody who's like, you just so amazing. You deserve so much better. And some people still don't even want to hear that shit. And that shit is mad nice. Like, for you to say I deserve better than my shitty ass fucking boyfriend is amazing. Like, wow. I would be, like, baffled if somebody told me that. <laughs> Not now. What I got, I love. I'm talking about in the past. If somebody was just like, yo, you deserve better than that. Like, you shouldn't have to deal with that shit. Like, that's fucking fly as fuck. Like... But then some motherfuckers be like, what you mean I don't deserve that? What's wrong with him? And it's just like, girl. Like, yeah, you know. Some people, you know. I mean, and that's what sometimes judgmental people do is like, you deserve better than that. And that that can be true. It's not being judgmental. It's being truthful, you know. Um, in terms of relationships and stuff like that. Like, you deserve somebody who's going to give you their 100%. Give you their self full and wholeheartedly. Not 50, not 60, not 70, not... 80 100 you know um or sometimes they might say stuff like that don't make sense what the fuck you saying like they be like that don't make sense and sometimes the shit motherfuckers say don't be making no sense because you be doing dumb shit and when you do dumb shit dumb shit don't make sense because why the fuck would you do that dumb when you do dumb stuff it don't make sense it's stuff that should not be done so i don't know you know it's, it's a very thin line between being real and judgmental but like i said it's just about how you say and how you approach things you know what i'm saying so it, it it's just a lot i wanted to touch base on one of the um the the 13 the 13 things is loaded so i'll get back to y'all but um okay here it goes i wanted to really really touch base on the one it was like the ones i said was problematic like you believe everyone is out to get you i don't know how y'all feel about that when you judge mentally you feel like everyone is out to get you i can't relate i don't i don't how would that correlate i don't know if you listen give that some food for thought because i can't um you struggle yeah, of course you're suspicious and untrusting can judgmental people be suspicious and untrusting? That's a lot. These are big accusations. It depends. It depends on the person, obviously. It really does depend on the person or whatever the case may be. Because I can see how you might be suspicious and untrusting. Maybe like when somebody is telling you a story. Oh, I get it. I get it. I get it. Like You know how like somebody is telling you a story but you feel like I'm judging you because, bitch, that don't make no fucking sense. I think those are, like, usually in, like, really, really big topics. In terms of, like, uh, let's say, for instance, you tell somebody a story, right? And they, like, oh, my aunt accused me of stealing a thousand dollars because I was the only one in the house <laughs> at the time. Before she left the money down in the fucking, I don't know, her countertop. And then, I, yeah, after she left, she put it there. And then just so happened I was the last person in the house. And then it went missing. But it still wasn't me. Like, I feel like those are times when people are, um, you know, those are like situations. Because there's, a, there's a way more situations than just dating relationships where you can be judgmental, right? That's a, a very big situation to be judgmental, right? Um... I think that's what they're like alluding to. I would think you're suspicious and trusting that person. So you, and maybe you had an experience with them where you, maybe they stole some shit from you or something like that. You thought they did. And you like, bitch, so who you think took the money? Did anybody, like you start asking them questions like, did anybody come to the house after you? 
or whatever and it's coming off as judgmental but maybe that person dad's really didn't steal that money and we and you know there's always two sides to every story there might be some stuff that's missing out the story and she might be dead ass telling the truth or she might be lying so i think and they i think they mean it in that type of sense like people who do stuff where it's like stealing and um I, when people are accused of like really big things like you know it could be anything killing killing somebody bitch or, so, or or somebody situations where people kids get taken away from them and it's just like bitch you a mother how your kids got taken away from you we start being judgmental but we might not know the full story so i guess in those type of senses like you can't really trust them like why your kids got taken from you what the fuck can i trust you around my kids type shit like i get what they're saying i get what they're saying um so i understand that but i mean as long as you got within good reason can you have a good reason to be judgmental of somebody i don't think you should ever be um judgmental all right so here goes the the ways they say you can um stop being judgy how to end the habit of being judgmental they said explore yourself talk and journal about it this this one to me is like a lot of people don't know they're judgmental so it's hard to really journal about being judgmental except the ugly weird and messy parts easier said than done but by slowly and steadily, steadily working to accept yourself you become less critical of others as well oh i like that you know work on yourself bitch and then you start noticing help that's a fact let's dig into that when you start working on yourself right and you go to therapy and you start seeing like, bitch, I got a lot of fucking problems. Even if you think you was perfect and lined the fuck up and you start seeing like, wow, I really do this. I really dealt with this. I'm really dealing with that. You're going to really start being judgmental too. When you start really breaking down your messy and ugly, weird motherfucking parts of yourself, that's a fact. You're going to be like, well, bitch, I'm a hot ass mess. <laughs> oh, <laughs> okay. So, um, look deeper into people and situations. When we judge others, we tend to do so quickly. And as a result of our beliefs and misconceptions, but jumping to conclusions blinds us, causing us to quickly shut off and ignore the complexity of others. For example, people who are mean, cruel, shallow, untrustworthy, or unfriendly almost always act from some kind of inner pain. That's obvious. Um... Yeah, and that's the other thing too. People, a lot of people are judgmental. They do jump to conclusions mad quick. Like, bitch, how you get from A to fucking Z? Like, relax, grab the story, grab the information, and also like before you judge and think like, what what could this person have possibly been through to be behaving like this? Like, honestly, that's true. That's true as fuck. People do be making up shit too. I don't like that type. That that also needs to be discussed too. That's the type of judgmental behavior too when you be making up shit. Like, how the fuck you gonna make up somebody like that's that's judgy as fuck. You know how people be like, Oh, I was just talking to my friend about this shit the other day. Like, how people, when you get into a relationship, people want to just make your man the issue of all your fucking decisions. Like, bitch, even if I was single, I probably still wouldn't want to go to this event that you invited me to. Even if I was single, I probably still wouldn't want to talk to your ass on the phone today. Even if I was single, I probably still wouldn't want to hold this conversation with you, wouldn't want to do this business idea with you, still wouldn't want to do X, Y, Z, 54, 5, 7 with your ass. Single or not single. But a lot of times too, I was saying like when you get into a relationship, your friend be like, oh, it's her man that's telling her to do this. That's number one. Not only is that judgmental, that's some narcissistic ass behavior. For you to sit down, instead of, for you to sit down and say, Oh, bitch, it gotta be her man that's telling her to do this. Vice versa saying, maybe she just don't want to be around me. Maybe maybe she just don't want to go to the event with me. Maybe she not feeling my swagger. Maybe she not feeling me today. Or he. Like, that says a lot about you as a person, too. To really just try to find a reason as to... I get that you're trying to find a reason as to why this person behaving this way. But for you to automatically put it on the person's partner is a little insane. Like, I feel like you, I feel like, let's start doing that. When think, when people start changing around us, let's p at least find three different scenarios as to why. And bitch, one of them scenarios better be you. Because nobody never want to put the blame on their motherfucking self. Like, they'll, they'll, somebody will definitely find three scenarios like, it got to be her man. 
this bitch did some funny shit to me or she going somewhere else one of those three scenarios better always be you I don't give a fuck what nobody say. You better be like, did I ever say something to this girl the last time we hung out? Or this guy the last time we hung out that was rude or disrespectful? Could have been rude or disrespectful. Did I do something? Like, for real. Like, real talk. A lot of motherfuckers be doing shit. But don't want to put themselves in the equation as to why people was moving funny. And that'd be, that'd be the top five motherfucking problem. Why people was moving funny. It'd be you. It don't be the man. It don't be because they in a relationship. It don't be none of that. It'd be you. The fuck? Moving on. Moving on. Moving on. But that's also considered judgmental ass behavior. So, instead of jumping from X, Y, to Z, because I know people like that too. My mother's like that. I told y'all that in the episode. Like, she's her present. She'll hear a story and she'll just jump to fucking Z off rip. Like, she goes from A to Z. She don't even go to B, C, maybe A to D. Y'all just be going to the last letter. Like, damn. I be like, girl, who told you that? You made all that up off the top of your head? Stop. Very judgy. You know old people be judgy as fuck anyway. <laughs> be critical about your judgmentalism. Yeah. I don't, you know, I I, I can't really relate. So it's like kind of hard. But I, I would love, and that's why I love to see people grow and heal. Like I would, I want to meet somebody who's like really doing the work. Like I feel like, through the podcast i'm very open and transparent about me like healing and doing work and shit but i dad want to meet people that's just like trying to stop being judgmental or trying to stop being problematic and they really heal like i really i always pray for that too i'll be like god i just want you to work through people just to heal at least one person close to me like i really want to meet somebody like that that's just trying to just heal through not just trauma because i feel like here we go. I feel like a lot of times people just go to therapy after experience trauma, after experience loss. Um, like, I want to meet motherfuckers that's just, like, looked at themselves in the mirror and be like, yo, something ain't right about me. Like, I'm kind of a fucked up ass person. Like, real talk. I did that before, too. You know what I'm saying? I told you I went to therapy for no reason at 23. Like, I really want to meet people who just decided to go to therapy because they feel like they ain't shit. What's up? Like, I really want to meet somebody like that. I feel like people just be going to therapy because something happened to them. Like, just why you just can't just go to therapy because you just feel like you a little off. You feel me? Like, it don't even have to be because something happened to you when you was 12. Just be like, yo, I just, I just don't like the type of person I am. I feel like I've been really mean lately. I feel like I've been very sad lately. I feel like I ain't shit. I feel like I ain't progressing in my life. I'm gonna go to therapy. Like, I rarely meet people who do that. Like, rarely. Like, what's up? Like, do y'all know somebody who ever said that? Like, oh yeah, I'm gonna go to therapy because I just been, you know. Like, I really, I, I don't know. So, hey. But, look, if you watching, you listening, and you feel like you ain't shit, just go to therapy off of that. You don't have to go to therapy. And that's the other thing, too, is like, niggas be going to therapy until something bad happen like go beforehand so when shit pop off for real you know what steps to take and what protocol to take you know what i'm saying so i mean hey girl <laughs> next because i feel like it's really hard for people to be critical about your own judgmentalism because a lot of people don't know they're judgmental. And I feel like if people was going to get help or going to get therapy or just trying to, even if you don't want to get therapy, even if you was looking at yourself in the mirror or just journaling or just trying to be a progressive person and just looking at your choices and decisions, you would know you were, you are a judgmental person and maybe you can be critical of it. Or, and it's also... It's also about the type of people you keep around you too because I also know people who too who be like, people be telling me I'm mad judgmental. And I'm just like, wow, you got good people in your circle. <laughs> like, if you got motherfuckers that's dead telling you like, you're judgmental, you're mean, you're rude, you're this, you're that. And also complimenting you too because there's also a, a room for that where it's just people who always want to tell you the bad about you but they'll never want to tell you the good about you. But I also feel like it's about the type of people you keep in your circle. And you want people in your circle that's just constantly telling you the good and the ugly about yourself. 
even if they're telling you indiscreetly, at least they're telling you it. So be mindful of the type of people you keep around you. And if they're going to tell you the truth and shit. Moving on. Moving on. Um, ground yourself with mindfulness. When being judgmental is a habit, it causes your mind to become narrow so that you see with tunnel vision. You cease to be grounded in reality, becoming lost in the world of your judgments instead. So, yeah, I understand that. Oh, they only gave five ways to be not judgmental. It gave you 13 ways to realize how you are judgmental, which is funny. Because, you know, it's not easy to break a bad habit. It's, it's easy to spot it, but it's really hard to break it. So... Yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I hope we could all try to be a lot, uh, a little bit not judgmental. I feel like even if I feel like I'm not judgmental, I'm pretty sure I'm a little bit judgmental. I feel like we all have a tendency to be judgmental because even though we go through things in life, we all don't experience everything. And God forbid we don't. I hope we just get our own little unique traumas and problems and issues. We don't want to go through all of them, bitch. But, um, so yeah, if we... In a situation that we may or may not understand, we might be judgmental of it, unfortunately. I haven't experienced everything I experienced enough, but not at all. So, some topics I might be judgmental in, and I'm not privy to it, and I hope that I'm not. You know, so, I just want us all to be mindful of it. Nobody wants to be judgmental. I think being judgmental is, like, one of the top ten things you don't want to be. Like, you know how they say being judgmental, being jealous, being narcissistic, being mean. Like, judgmental is definitely up there with things you don't want to be. Like, you don't want to be that. You don't want to be a judgment ass motherfucker. So, yeah. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Because I did. I always enjoy my episodes. I don't care. I'm really that girl. Like, I'm like that. <laughs> and anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you are streaming, listening to any DSPs, make sure you give me five stars. Leave a review or comment. Make sure you subscribe. Hello. Even if you're a streamer, go head over to YouTube. Type in Brit Says with two T's and hit the subscribe button. Per Everybody needs to subscribe and share. If you're watching this and you like, yo, I thought this was a good episode. I'm dead as judgmental. I have a friend that's judgmental. <laughs> and I'm going to send this shit to her. I have an aunt that's judgmental. I'm going to send this shit to her too. By all means, do that hello good morning like even if i get seven watches if i'm getting 25 streams by you sending it to one person you can send me the 50 streams and 14 views hello good morning so i just need y'all to share spread the love i know it's not easy for whatever reason oh i should get into that tea that's i'm gonna give y'all tea next week bitch i'm about to get in everybody's motherfucking ass next week Look at that. Now I got a topic for next week. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> make sure you subscribe. Make sure you're leaving five stars. Make sure you're sharing and telling people. And I will see you guys when? Next week. Bye.